I want to take my thought from verse number six, and it says, uh, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and he worshipped him. He ran and he worshipped him. Look at your neighbor, and I want you to say this to your neighbor with authority. Say, neighbor, your worship and your praise is going to bring it to its knees. I want to minister for a little while. God's going to bring it to its knees. My name is George Gary John Derek Bloomer. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, 453 Columbia Street, apartment A, B, and C. My mom and my dad had nine children together. My dad went out of the wedding barn and had 15 other children by six women in the same projects I grew up in. I dropped out of school in the ninth grade and wasn't able to read. The teacher would pass me from grade to grade because she didn't want me in her class the next year because I was a cantankerous young man. So from grade one until grade nine, I was passed from class to class to class and was not able to read. I learned how to read 20 years ago. I'm 52 years old now, which means that I went through my entire adult life not being able to read, write, or spell, and I still have my challenges now. I had a $300 a day cocaine habit. I would give my life to the Lord the first time in the notorious Rackers Island prison. I gave my life to the Lord the first time in Rackers Island prison. I gave my life to the Lord the first time in Rackers Island prison. Now, if I said I'm giving my life to the Lord the first time, that must mean that there were other times that I had to give my life to the Lord. I truly, truly understand what yokes and what bondages are all about. It is, it, it is amazing to me the life that God has given me because I was destined to fail. My, my parents come from Jamaica. Their parents come from Jamaica. My great, great, my grandparents came and settled in the United States of America and they lived in Charleston, South Carolina. They opened up a small little church that never grew beyond 20 or 30 people at a time. My grandmother uh, uh, practiced obia, witchcraft. Although my grandfather was a man of God and he preached, she was working roots and working voodoo inside the church. When women would have problems with their husbands or they would have issues with their body, she would uh, hold little prayer meetings and bury little men in flower pots. Can I preach for a little while? She was working voodoo and witchcraft. She did not like me not one bit at all. Not one bit at all. I couldn't understand it. This is your grandson. Who wouldn't like me? She did not like me for whatever reason. And at age nine, I couldn't tie my shoes. At age nine, I couldn't tie my shoes. And she said, you're going to learn how to tie your shoes. And if you don't learn how to tie your shoes, I'm going to break your neck. She was a violent woman. <laughs> Can I preach here for a little while? And so she would, uh, when she got upset and angry with me, she would make me stretch my hands out and take a drumstick and hit the tips of my fingers because I couldn't tie my shoe. My sister came to me one day and my grandmother said, you're going to tie your shoe today and you're going to stay in this house until you learn how to tie your shoe and either you're going to tie your shoe or I'm going to break your neck. So my sister came to me, she says, George, you got to learn how to tie your shoe. You got to learn how to tie your shoe. And my sister made the bunny ears and flipped it over and pulled the, the, the loose through and tied my shoe. So I said, just leave it. It's tied. She says, no, grandma is going to challenge you. You got to learn how to tie your shoe. She started crying. And while my sister was crying, I made the two bunny ears. I flipped it over pulled it up under and I tied my shoe I didn't learn how to tie my shoe because I was intelligent I learned how to tie my shoe because I loved my sister and I didn't want my sister to cry little did I know that that was my first act of intercession and I preached for a little while it was the first time that I began to do something not because it was for me but because it was for someone else I couldn't understand why my grandmama did not like me why my grandmama was so upset with me my grandmama was bothered by me they told me later on in life, my grandmother was upset with me and didn't like me because I looked like my mom. And she never wanted my mom to marry my dad. It is amazing how people will do certain things to you. But God always has a plan. Is that right or wrong? 